Hello, what is up dudes? It's been a while. The point of this video is gonna be me just trying to expand my knowledge and learn more about wireless transmission, this time through using an ESP32, which is similar to an Arduino, except it can connect to Wi-Fi. So no more ugly radio frequency transmitters. Stupid. I wanna take one of those ESP32s and connect it to a bunch of LEDs and make a cool lamp for my buddy Gaston. Gaston came up with this idea and fun fact, he's actually the one that made most of the music that I use on my channel. Go check him out on SoundCloud. The coolest thing about this is that since it's using Wi-Fi, I can use my phone or a computer, anything that's on the network to act as the controller for it. Pretty much the thesis of this, I'm gonna make a gumball lamp that can be wirelessly controlled with an app. I've never done anything like this before, so don't take this as a tutorial, just take this as you watching me go through the process of probably failing a bunch of times. That should be a common theme throughout this channel by now. Getting into this, I'm gonna be using some code that I completely made up on my own. Just kidding, don't judge. As per usual, I'm not an expert on this and I'll be using a bunch of YouTube tutorials to try and teach myself how to do it. I'll leave links in the description. I had to jump through a ton of hoops to get the libraries and everything figured out. I've got it plugged in, so now I'm just gonna upload this hall sensor sketch. It's an example sketch and see what happens. Oh yeah, and when using an ESP32, I figured out that you have to press this little button. It's like a boot button in order to get it to work, because I'm not sure if it's supposed to work off of Arduino software in the first place, but just press the button when you're uploading a sketch to it. All right, looks like it's open. I'm going to open the serial plotter. This is just to check and see if it works. I've got it hooked up, and it's being a Hall Effect sensor right now, and I've got a bunch of magnets. So if I bring it to... Oh! Oh! Did y'all see that? Negative. Positive? Cool. Well, I know that the device works. Real quick, do y'all remember last video when I complained about the crappy soldering iron that I had? If anyone out there has an extra TS-100 or wants to donate one, that would be awesome. I'm not the only one that thought it was bad. I've gotten a couple comments about how terrible it is. One guy hated the soldering iron so much that when I made the comment that I would like a TS-100 just passively, he agreed and he actually sent me one. So props to him. I don't know if he wants recognition, but if you're out there and you know who you are, just leave a comment below. I'll pin it so everybody can know that you're the charitable donator that helped me and is gonna help me from now on every time I have to solder something. I greatly appreciate it. Alright, after a lot more research and splicing together little bits of code from a bunch of different sources, I think I got something that might work. I don't know how to hold this for the camera. I ran through the code and figured out how to connect it to my Wi-Fi. I found the IP address through my AT&T portal thing. When I change this last letter, it makes the lights change to whatever I want. So I have a G for green, R for red, uh, B for blue. and W for white. But having it just do one color at a time isn't really what I want. I wanna see if there's a way that I can make it like a rainbow effect, cause it's gonna be in a gumball machine, so it'd be cool to see if it would like spiral down, cause it's, mm, I'm gonna do some more research. All right, wow, I think I just found a code that was a lot better. Man, this is, this is why a lot of like prototyping and stuff like that isn't recorded just because I like making videos about learning and the process of creating something. I don't really like it when everything goes completely smooth because that wouldn't be entertaining and that's not really challenging. I'm not teaching myself anything. I like capturing on film that moment when I actually get something accomplished and it's pretty cool. If everything was scripted, that would just feel too not authentic. It would feel scripted. I mean, you may learn something, but hey, I'm making videos for me. It's my channel, damn it. I don't know what I'm doing sometimes, so I'm gonna crash and burn or maybe spend 
half of the day working on a code and then finding something that is way better and using that. I never get discouraged because I think learning is one of the coolest things and that's why I'm making these videos is to show myself learning and maybe inspire some of y'all to learn something on your own. You kind of try, fail, level up, try again and just repeat that over and over. That's pretty good. That could go on a bumper sticker. Anyways, I hope y'all stay with me. So this is where I got after several more hours. Uh, pretty much borrowed a bunch of code. I have a rainbow wave and some other stuff. So through my Wi-Fi, when I click on rainbow, a, and if I go back and turn LEDs off, it turns off. Sweet. I'm still trying to figure out what the other functions do, but it's a step in the right direction. Alrighty, I'm gonna show you the code, just try to stay with me. So this is what I think is going on. Somebody please correct me if I'm wrong, which I'm sure I'm gonna be wrong on some of this stuff. So right here, I'm looking at the main code. This is where I'm gonna be setting up that web server. I'm gonna be setting up that web page that I showed you earlier with the different options. You click on an option, it goes further down and calls one of those options out of another header file. Now, your header files are the ones up here. So for instance, say on that web page, you click rainbow. The ESP is gonna recognize from this first page that you clicked rainbow, then go over to the rainbow function, and run it as so. There's the establishing code, and then there's like the callouts. I hope I explained that well. This code was made in 2016, originally for an ESP8266, so I had to go through the main file, as well as all the header files, and change the 8266 callouts to ones that an ESP32 can understand. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Okay, I've got the code figured, now I need the actual gumball machine. Is it bad that I haven't seen the machine yet? <laughs> All right, today is the day after the build and I messed up a little bit. Gaston came over and showed me the gumball machine for the first time. We cleaned it up, took it apart and got ready to put the LEDs inside. And after that point, just to make sure we got it done right, uh, we did everything twice. Definitely not because we messed up. We soldered on the longer LED strip and tested the code with everything. It worked out perfect. But then thanks to a cheap power supply, somehow a few of the LEDs got fried. What? It can't possibly be pulling. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Why, bro? There's gotta be data, so I think you may be right in thinking that it came off somewhere. So somewhere along about a 10 foot strip of LEDs, there's a controller or data pin that's messed up. I'll have to fix that later, but I had a backup LED strip, so that wasn't that bad. The bad part is we had already installed Why, a strip in the suck? gumball machine when we figured out that it was messed up. After troubleshooting for a long time, we decided to just replace the LED strip. We glued the LED strips down with just some hot glue so they came off pretty easy. We were back up and running and ready to install the second strip. It was at this point that the ESP32 decided to turn itself into a George Foreman grill. Damn, that's hot. So I ended up having to replace that one too. Oh, and did I mention that my soldering iron works? Ow, ah, soldering iron hot. Freaking hurts. We wrapped up the middle of the gumball machine again using hot glue to hold it in place. And this time we waited till the very end to add on the ESP32. We soldered it up, put it all back together, and then... In the description of this video, I have all the references that I used as well as the code that I came up with. Don't judge me too hard on that. It, it still, it, as well as all the components that I used. I think this project ended up looking pretty awesome. Gaston already had those little gumball sized LEDs at the top and he wanted something to put in the center. So it all came together pretty well. If you're still watching, I very much appreciate you watching all the way through this. And if you like it, if you want to help me out or give me more of a drive to keep creating stuff, then make sure to like the video and subscribe, leave a comment. I read everything and I'll, I'll probably read up. I'm gonna read. All right, going through the comments, I see, hey man, cool videos, keep up the work. I think this video will help you with your flicker issue. I just turned the light off. Uh, Villatech, great content and presentation as always. Your videos are criminally underviewed and it makes me sad. Like, hey man, I don't want anybody to be sad. Just, just, you're fine. Thanks for watching. And then we have Ronald Ramsey. This is sweet. I'm gonna build a quadruped pretty soon and talks about it. Yeah, I wanna see that dude. Ronald, would if you make it, post it on YouTube. I will link it and watch it. That'd be awesome. I think I got my point. I read your comments. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next video.